Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room and today's video is going to be around the ultimate guide to cold water perch fishing. Now we've got snow outside, it's probably two or three inches of snow. I don't think we're going to get above uh, freezing for like a whole week. Uh, we've got a little mini beast from the east coming through and it's really going to bring that water temperature down. It wouldn't surprise me if we're down probably around three degrees in most water um, temperatures around the country at the moment. So canals, still waters, rivers, that sort of stuff. Rivers are probably gonna be a little bit out of action at the moment. But um, yeah, even once you've uh, uh, got a layer of ice on top of a canal, for example, the water under, underneath is generally gonna be stable at about three degrees. But think about it in these terms, water freezes solid at zero degrees and fish are cold-blooded. So that means that they're gonna be the same temperature, their bodies are gonna be the same temperature as the water that surrounds them. And if they're in three degree water, they're only three degrees away from being frozen solid, all right? Think about that. Um, that is pretty cold and it's vastly different how their bodies react in terms of their metabolism, how their enzymes work, uh, their, their behavior, their feeding behaviors, et cetera, et cetera, compared to say in the summer when you might have 18 or 20 degrees and they're really active and they're up and down in the water column and they're chasing food and that you know you can catch them on all sorts of baits loads of aggressive baits like crank baits chatter baits all of that sort of stuff it ain't going to be happening at this time of year all right so i'm going to run through two or three different methods and a few tips for what i call ultimate cold water all right so this is how do i even just get one or two bites because most of these fish are gonna be so not in the mood for feeding. Uh, I also think there's something around, you know, at this time of year, people are using a lot of sort of screen wash on their cars. They spread a lot of salt on the roads, that type of stuff. And any of those kind of chemicals start getting into, um, into the water systems. And I think that has a bit of an effect as well. So it's so many things against us when we're lure fishing at this time of year, when it's really, really cold. But here's my tips because all of these tips around being able to base, you know, offer those, those baits suspended in front of those fish for long periods of time, not moving the bait huge amounts, uh, and really looking for bites pretty much when the lure is static for quite a long time, all right? So there's only a few methods that, that we can really do for that. Um, the first one I'm gonna cover is drop shot because um, I'm currently writing an article in the LAS magazine uh, all around drop shotting. And I get this question all the time. When do I use a drop shot? I get loads and loads of beginners asking me, oh, I've heard about this thing called drop shot. Is that what we should do? Um, well, actually, if you're a beginner, nine times out of 10, I'd say, other than this time of year when it's freezing cold, fish yourself a jig. It's way easier. You just tie one on the end and off you go. Drop shot's a little bit more um, complicated in, in terms of how you tie up. I've made other videos on how to make um, drop shot rigs in the past, so have a look in my library if you want to learn how to actually tie a drop shot rig up. But for today, I'm going to give you a few extra tips and really tell you kind of how I fish it when, when the water's so incredibly cold. All right, so um, the first thing that, that kind of differentiates a drop shot from a jig, for example, and makes it so good, I'm always, as a tournament angler, looking for what is the ultimate benefit of each individual rig? So with a crankbait, for example, a hard bait, the fact that it is hard, it displaces a lot of water and you can get big rattles in them. It's a very loud, aggressive bait. That is what makes a crankbait so good. What makes a drop shot so good is really a few things, but one is the fact that it's disconnected from the lead. So you've got your lead down here, your pencil weight, then you've got your, your drop essentially coming up to your bait that's on a line. So that allows a few things. It allows quite small hooks to be able to be used, tiny baits, definitely, definitely, if you're really struggling for bites and you know that there's certain perch in that area, do always think about shrinking down. It's very difficult to do that on a jig because there's only kind of so tiny you can go and still, and still be able to get any casting distance. Um, and with a jig, basically, even if it's the lightest possible, 0 0.5 of a gram, for example, you get it out there, it's gonna fall down. In order to get that lure to, to obviously move, you've got to twitch it, it comes towards you, you then pause, it's then on the fall, but it's always moving. So unless you're asking them to pick it up off the bottom, there's no way to fish a jig static, 
all right? And that's, that's a really, really key point. You've always got to be moving the lure. And, and it's quite tricky because even as slow as you can fish a jig sometimes, it's still too fast for them and it still comes into their zone and then out of their zone way, way too quick. Whereas with a drop shot, another one of the benefits is you can throw it out there, you can leave it in a certain area and you can basically do a technique that I call shaking the slack, all right? So twitch, 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 hold it tight, twitch, 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 hold it tight, but you're not moving the lead a huge amount, all right? So in terms of retrieve, throw it into an area, um, let it sit or set, settle on the bottom, um, sort of get a bit of a tight line. You're always going to have a little slight bow to it um, and you want to be, uh, yeah, shaking the slack. So pull up tight to your lead, but don't move it. And then drop that, drop that rod tip an inch or two and shake, 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 and then pause. Then just give it a little bit of controlled slack, slowly drop it down and that, that bait will slowly kind of flutter down a little bit and then twitch, twitch, and it will come back up again. All right, but you're not actually moving the lead. That's absolutely key with a drop shot at this time of year at other times of year you can fish them with a shad a little bit more of an aggressive bait you can fish them so that you can kind of wind them drag the lure, um, the weight along the bottom and present a lure just over the top like if there was weeds for example it can be a great rig but for this time of year it's all about slowing down and not making any movements really with with not any huge movements at least with that rig if you haven't had a bite, you can fish that in that area. So you're really probably only fishing a six to 10 inch diameter kind of uh, zone. Um, so you do need a little bit of water clarity. I'd say minimum 10 inches uh, uh, to a foot for a drop shot, because again, you're not gonna be fishing super high vibration baits. I've got a couple of Westin blood tees on here and I can shake them around and they look really attractive. So visually that's amazing, but that's why you need a bit of clarity to the water. Um, if there was really coloured water and there was only sort of two or three inches of visibility, I could be shaking this around. It's all, it's, you know, there's no, there's very little vibrations. There's, there's no rattles. There's, there's no attraction to it. So it would, it would be very difficult for them to find it in very, very low visibility water. All right. So make sure you've got a minimum of about 10 inches or so. Um, and uh, yeah. One of the little tips that I've got here as well is, is putting on a small pattern oster. Now that is about two inches and that's the maximum that I would go, all right? Why do I put a pattern oster on? Well, think about it like this. If you've got your line coming down and you've got a hook coming off on a traditional drop shot rig and it goes down to your weight, when a fish approaches, he's gonna try and, you know, you've got a lure on here, he's gonna try and obviously engulf that lure. Once he comes up to it, there's only so far that he can get that bait into his mouth before the line is effectively impeding it on his top lip and his bottom lip. All right. Now, that's that's fine for most of the time. But imagine the coldest possible perch that wants to just eat something, but he's doing everything in slow motion. You've got to try and I, I use that Paternoster rig to just give an extra couple of degrees of freedom. All right. An extra little bit of movement so that depending on whichever way that he approaches the lure, if he wants to open his mouth, there's just that tiny little bit of slack, which will allow it to swivel, to pivot, uh, to move around with a few degrees of freedom and, and go into the mouth as far as possible. And that, that just allows an, it to go an extra inch further into the mouth before there's anything that impedes, um, you know, that, that bait. So you're going to get the best possible hookups when you get the tiniest possible bites. All right. Also imagine at this time of year, if you've got a lot of wind and there's, you know, even on the finest possible finesse braid, you're going to get a bow in your line, which creates that tight line the whole time um, from your lead up to your bait and, and then up to your rod. Um, if it's super tight the whole time, again, it makes it very, very difficult for that 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 perch uh, to kind of approach the lure and to be able to bite it and get it into his mouth properly because everything's tight. Uh, one of the things I do sort of say to people is when you flicked it out there as well, tighten it up to the lead, um, even if you're moving it. So you hop, hop, tighten up and then make sure you're giving that little bit of slack. All right, because that's when the, in order for them to get the bait in their mouth, they've got to open their mouth and sort of suck it in. Uh, and you've got to have just a little bit of slack to be able to get it in. And that paternoster one to two inches just allows it to go a little bit further in, better hook holds, uh, more degrees of freedom. So 
yeah, one of my top tips for uh, for drop shot f fishing when it's this this temperature. Um, right, moving on to a couple of other techniques. Um, there was also a question asked recently about kind of twitch baits or what I would call jerk baits. So um, yeah, we'll cover that a little bit. Um, again, this is a method that you can if you get the right bait. Uh, which, and when I say right, I mean the ability for it to suspend. And I mean, like, so when it's down at depth, when you stop that pause, and this is where things start getting technical, because it, you, often they've got treble hooks on. Um, you know, you're going to get, so here's the Western platypus, for example. A twitch bait is generally a long, slender, kind of minnow-style bait. Uh, a lot of them have quite small veins on them, like that one or like this one. Um, again, minnow style bait, and they're absolutely amazing for being able to um, twitch, twitch, and they fire off kind of left and right as, as you're bringing them in. Um, the main thing is you want to go twitch, twitch, pause. Now, if you haven't got the right balance between um, the amount that your bait floats or whether you've got a wire trace on or um, maybe it sinks, you really want to be not moving once you've paused, not allowing that bait to move more than about this sort of pace, all right? So ever so slowly rising or ever so slowly sinking, but really you want it to just hang. That is the beauty, the same as the drop shot. Cast it into that area, you're fishing it wherever, between five and about eight inches off the bottom, and you can hang it in one spot as natural as possible, all right, um, for the longest period of time. It gives those cold, lethargic fish loads of time to be able to eventually get over there, make up their mind, and they only want to attack a bait. I've had it before where you fish these types of baits, and some, the person on the boat next to you is catching, and you're fishing roughly the same bait, and you can't seem to catch, and then you look at it in the water, and, and quite often it's because it's just, maybe your wire trace is a little bit too heavy, maybe it's a slightly sinking version, or maybe it's an old version that was suspending, that's taken on a little bit of water and starts to sink. It's like you have to get that suspending just right, and you have to get it within their zone again. They're very rarely gonna, you always wanna fish twitch baits slightly above the eye line, but you don't want to fish it so far above the eye line that they're just not going to come and get it. Because like I said, they won't chase those baits. So you've got to get it down to depth. So think about, you know, so for example here, I've got Westin um, Platypus Shallow Runner. And then I thought I had another one around somewhere. He's got, he's got a much bigger bill on. Here we go. So that's the Westin Platypus Deep Runner. Much bigger bill. So I can get it down to depth. All right. So if you're on shallow canals and stuff, small rivers, shallow rivers, you know, that will get me down to, well, it says one to two meters, so about six foot or so. This one I'll be able to get down to at least 12 foot. So if I am fishing slightly deeper kind of reservoirs or, or whatever, I've got to get down to that depth. Want to be just above the eye line, twitch, 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 and then you want it to pause and kind of not, not really be going anywhere. That's when you're going to get those bites. On this one, for example, you might be able to see it says floating, all right? So once I get a wire trace on this, that's gonna be absolutely pretty much ideal. However, if I, if I was exclusively fishing for perch and I knew that there was no pike in and I didn't need to fish a, a wire trace on that venue, the one thing that I would do to make that suspend rather than float is upsize the trebles. So we've probably got about size uh, six or eights on there. I would upsize the split rings and upsize the trebles one size. So I'd go up to a size four and that slight extra weight, they're very, very delicate, but that slight extra weight is gonna make that suspend much better than, than if it's floating. Floating crankbaits, absolutely amazing in the summertime, especially if you wanna try and keep them out of snags because as you're diving around, you're keeping that on the move the whole time. So you're either winding and it's going down or you're pausing and it's coming back up again. That's exactly what you want in the summertime. In the wintertime, you want the opposite. You want to be like little flashes to get their attention. That's the whole point of a twitch bait. And it's all about the pause. And sometimes that pause can be anything up to like five to 10 seconds, which feels like an eternity for a, um, for a lure angler. But trust me, that's when you're going to get those bites. Um, and then the last thing, if you are into your jig fishing, you don't like drop shot fishing, um, this is the last kind of tip. You can fish a jig 
But for me, at this time of year, ultimate cold water perch fishing is all about the shape of the jig head, all right? So hopefully you can see that there. We've got a scoop or scallop shaped um, jig head and it's on an offset hook, which is absolutely ideal. And it's gonna sit on that 45 degree angle. All right, I've got myself a ring tease curl tail on here. Again, you wanna be, I mean, the greatest bait of all time for perch fishing, in my opinion, is, um, where is it? I mean, I've got one around somewhere is the Westin Shad Tees nine centimeter in headlight. You pretty much can't get a better bait than that um, for big perch. Um, got the Bull Tees here as well, which is probably another good example, but it's got quite a big paddle tail on it. It's got quite a chunky body and it does have body roll, okay? You want to avoid that when the water's cold. You want much more subtle. So here I've got the Westin Kick Tees, Lovely little slender kind of bait goes into the mouth, like I said earlier with the drop shot. Goes in like if that's going to that can that can fold up so easily to be able to go into the mouth. They're not going to be sucking it really hard. They're not going to be attacking it really hard. So you've got to make everything as cute and finesse and think about all these different aspects of how are you going to present that lure in front of them just long enough for them to then what's the easiest way for it to then go into the mouth and get a proper bite as well. So nice slim lures and a tiny, tiny little paddle tail on the end there. Just get tight, no body roll whatsoever. Um, more importantly, like I said earlier, you're gonna fish it on the way up, you'll get a little bit of action. On the way down, you'll get some action as well. Nine times out of 10, you do get those bites on that fall. But the main thing that I want to say to you is you've got to be able to have a presentation that allows that bait to be still, all right, dead sticking. If you've got a regular ball jig head on and a normal paddle tail, you're going to cast him out. He's going to get to the bottom and the shape of that ball jig head, all right, is the fact is it's going to roll itself over and just sit on the bottom. It's not very appetizing and you're asking a fish to come down and have to bother. He's got to bother to pick it up. He's probably gonna get a mouthful of rotten leaves and twigs and silt and muck. And it's just like, he just isn't in the mood. But if we can offer this with just a little bit of, you know, attraction, and then it sits on the bottom like that, on that 45 degree angle, and then just leave it there and you'll be surprised. You get those bites when it's absolutely static, all right? So static on your twitch baits or your jerk baits, static on your, um, on your drop shot and static on your jig heads as well. But it's all about getting the right shaped jig heads. You want a stand up jig head. I mean, I've got one here. Um, again, another real big fan of like, so if you're, sometimes you're only gonna get one or two bites, but they can be the biggest ones of the year. All right, so you can gamble at this time of year. You're not gonna get many bites anyway. And a lot of people shrink down and finesse. But a lot of people also think, well, if I'm only going to get one or two bites, I might as well fish something proper. And if I get a bite, it could be a, the fattest one of the year. It could be a PB. All right. If you do that, again, fishing on the bottom, but I've got it on a stand up jig head there. You can probably see that little scallop shaped. So he sits on the 45 degree angle. Really, really easy. And I've got a skirt on here as well. Always consider a skirt because... Why do I like skirts? I like skirts because there's a lot of movement without too much vibration, but more than anything, if you've ever done tank tests uh, when you've got skirts on, you move that lure and you get a little bit of obviously, so with the cree crawl, you get some movement in the arms. Then when he sits down on the bottom, so that pause that you're making, that's one, two, three, four, five, when he sat on the bottom, that skirt, because they're so fine, each one of those individual strands is so fine, it's still got a tiny little bit of movement and a tiny bit of attraction. So it's working for you even when you're dead sticking on the bottom. And that can be absolutely killer. That is the main reason that I use skirts, all right, um, for fishing, you know, so... Two reasons. One, if you're spinner baits or chatter baits up in the water, because when you're twitching them a lot, you've got so much movement. But the other one is creature baits on the bottom for big perch during the winter, because you get that tiny little bit of movement after you've stopped the lure. And nine times out of 10, you're gonna get that bite after five seconds or more, five to 10 seconds of it not moving. It's so difficult for us as lure fishermen because we're, we're so active. We wanna keep moving and twitching the whole bait. 
Uh, and it's very difficult as well if you're only looking for one or two bites because it's, it's a much slower method. You don't cover as much water. But trust me, be patient, get the presentations right and make sure you're leaving those pauses in long enough for those, those really cold and lethargic fish to bite. All right, guys, so um, that was quite a long one. But something I've been thinking about a lot lately, ultimate guide to cold water perch fishing, a drop shot with your, make sure you're fishing it just right, maybe a little paternoster on there as a top tip, and also go for, for natural baits. You know, I'm a big fan of natural baits at this time of year, things like the blood teas, small creature baits, things that imitate nymphs, um, small crayfish. I think they're way easier to digest, so, those softer baits are way easier for fish to digest when their metabolism's low. And like I said, in that three degree water, their enzyme activity. So they just physically won't be able to digest um, bait as well, or the things that they eat as well. So, you know, quite often those huge pike are a bit different. They'll eat big things even in the coldest of water, but perch, they can be a little bit funky at times. And I do think little crayfish or creature baits or worm baits, uh, that's why the Ned Rig can be so good. Um, yeah, blood teas, anything like that can often outfish a shad just because it's matching the hatch, you know, and they're not feeding on, on those big fry so much because I don't think they can digest them that well. But yeah, um, twitch baits is all about twitch, twitch, and it's more of a reaction strike. Um, and then, yeah, anything with a little bit of a curl tail on it or a tiny paddle tail, um, yeah, and fish it on the 45. Make sure you're on those correct jig heads and leave a long enough pause. All right then, guys, hope that one helped. And uh, get, out, get out there, even though it's freezing cold. Hope you can still get out, enjoy yourself. If there's any questions, stick it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I never really ask this. I never, I never bother. I always think, oh, if you want to subscribe, do. But um, yeah, it does help the channel. So if you like the video and the content that I put out, do subscribe, hit the notification bell. And um, yeah, next time I make a video, it will pop up in your feed and you'll know that there's another one that's made if you like my stuff. So wicked. All right, guys, catch you on the next one.